celebration and how much fun we're all having that you decide to join us and become space geeks. <laughs> Send you a space geek button. <laughs> Check out planetary.org slash space geek and we'll set you up. Now, uh, this is the Curiosity rover, which is the one taking the next Mars dial to Mars. Uh, it was out of JPL in Pasadena. Now it's all origamically folded up and in a rocket at Cape Canaveral. And the next Saturday, I'm going down to Cape Canaveral for the launch, hopefully hoping that nothing delays it. Anyway, the Mars dial is a little bit like the gold plaque. It was the first message to the future since the Voyager missions during the disco era. And it has that motto, uh, to Mars to explore. Then around the edge of this little aluminum thing is a message to you. It says, we launched the spacecraft in our year 2011, arrived here in 2012. We built these instruments to study the Martian environment, to learn about Mars past, prepare for our future, look for signs of water and life. And then on the last of the four edges, it says in very small print, to those who visit here, we wish the joy of discovery. The joy of discovery. A safe journey and the joy of discovery. That, my friends, is the essence of science. That's what this is all about. The joy of knowing. The joy of discovery. That's what I want you to get in your hearts. That's what I would like you to use to, dare I say it, change the world. <laughs> Earlier this summer, I was uh, not shocked, but uh, a little bit down. Uh, Gil Scott Heron died. And Gil Scott Heron, if those historians, he did poetry to music. He did rap before it was called rap. This song was released in the year 1970. And the famous, famous song is The Revolution Will Not Be Televised. And what he meant was the man controls so much of the media that if there's a revolution, the man will not be able to keep up because people will, will take over the media and run things. And that kind of turned out to be what happened. It turns out not to literally be true. It turns out the revolution is televised. The level, revolution doesn't count unless it's on Twitter or Facebook. But there's revolutions going on all over the world right now, and you guys are part of it. You are seeing these old oppressive regime, regimes just being swept away through the power of the social network, through the power of Twitter and Facebook and the internet. And you guys are going to see the world change. And I want you to be the leaders. I want you to show the world how civilized society with the rule of law can advance things and science and technology can improve the lives of people everywhere. So we will have a better tomorrow. Uh, when there was a fire on Berkwood Place in Baltimore, Maryland in 1915, the fire truck was pulled by horses. When my grandfather went into World War I, he put a gas mask on himself and he put a gas mask on his horse. Because that's the way people did stuff. That's all they had. That was the technology. That's how you went to war. 20 years later, Nobody did anything who was serious about conducting a war. Nobody did anything like that on a horse. Everything changed in just 20 years. And my goodness, the changes that you guys will see will astonish people of my age. This is a picture of Saturn taken by the Cassini spacecraft about four years ago, three plus years ago. And it's a st striking picture. It's an astonishing picture. Here are the rings of Saturn casting a shadow on the back side of Saturn because the light just glows through the Saturnian atmosphere. By the way, if you had an extraordinary bathtub and an extraordinary uh, source of gravity, this thing would float. It's remarkable. But this is not just a picture of Saturn, everybody. This is a picture of the Earth. The Earth is right there. And that's it. It's that little dot in the middle of galactic nowhere. If we go straight up a few thousand kilometers, there's the sun, and that's the earth right there. When I was in third grade, Mrs. Cochran, my third grade teacher, 
told us there were more stars in the sky than grains of sand on the beach. And I remember thinking, lady, come on. <laughs> really, have you ever been to a beach? <laughs> There's nothing but sand. There's sand this way and that way, thousands of nautical miles. You go back there, you turn around, there's just sand. You go stand on sand. There's a cliff full of sand. The tide goes out, there's more sand. You shuffle your feet, and there's sand. I mean, I wouldn't have expressed it in this way. <laughs> Mrs. Conner, are you high? <laughs> So I'm a little kid standing on the beach thinking, well, I'm really not that different from a grain of sand, really. If, if you get out of here, I mean, I'm just another speck with all these other specks. And you look at it from here, and it's just a bunch of specks. And the sun, by the way, completely unremarkable star. There's nothing special about the sun. I mean, I'm a speck on a speck. Orbiting a speck with a bunch of other specs in a galaxy of specs in a universe full of other galactic specs. I'm in the middle of specklessness. I, I suck. But then with my brain, which is only this big, of course, my old boss. With your brain, you can imagine all of this. With your brain, you can know your place in space. And with your brain, my friends, you can, dare I say it, change the world! Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.